Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and yesterday Apple released watchOS 26.2 RC, or Release Candidate. The Release Candidate is the final version released to developers and public beta testers before it releases to the public. We'll talk about when to expect the release a little bit later in the video, but this came in at 4.7 gigabytes on my Apple Watch Ultra 3. It's a very large install, and if you're having issues installing this update and it's really slow, I would recommend that you actually turn off Bluetooth. That speeds things up so you can find that in your settings. So within settings, go to Bluetooth, scroll to the bottom, and you'll see the option to turn it off. Once it's turned off, it will force it to use Wi-Fi. Wait for it to download, then it will actually install much faster. Then you can turn Bluetooth back on and go back to normal. But that typically speeds things up, especially if it says it's going to take about four hours to install like it initially did, then it took only about 30 minutes or so. Now, along with this, Apple also released iOS 26.2 RC, macOS 26.2 RC, along with iPadOS 26.2 RC, tvOS and HomePodOS 26.2 RC, VisionOS 26.2 RC, and also iOS 18.7.3 and iPadOS 18.7.3 RC. All of those are available now if you're a developer or public beta tester. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go back into our settings. Now, if we go into settings, then we scroll down to general, then go to about, you can see the build number is 23S303. This just lets you know what version you're currently on. And most likely if there's no additional issues, this will be the version released to the public. You just have it early as a developer or beta tester. Now you can turn off your betas if you want to do that at this point, as if there is a different update, as far as a build number, you'll have that update as well. Once it releases to the public. Now, as far as what's new, well, there's a few things to go over. The first thing has to do with health. So if we go into the health app and within the health app under sleep score, if you're using your Apple watch to measure sleep, this will now have a sleep score that ranges a little bit differently from very low to very high. They've changed around where some of the points go and basically how it correlates to what they think is a little bit more accurate. So basically very low is zero to 40 points and you can see all of the different variants here. So that's what Apple's changed them to. There's also some updates to safety alerts. Now we get this in iOS 26.2 with 26.2 RC being the most recent. And if we go into our settings and notifications, scroll to the very bottom, you'll see that we have a new category for enhanced safety alerts. You'll see this here where it says earthquake alerts, imminent threat alerts, and improve alert delivery. So it says in emergency situations, your iPhone can receive safety alerts and broadcast them anonymously to nearby Apple devices. So that's something that's new and will broadcast over to your Apple watch. In fact, Apple says enhanced safety alerts can inform you about imminent threats such as floods, natural disasters, and other emergencies with rich information like a map of affected areas and links to additional safety guidance. This is currently available in the United States, so those will come over to your watch and be part of your notifications. Now in the European Union, Apple has changed the way your iPhone can share networks with Apple Watch to comply with new laws. Basically the way it works is if your iPhone is near your Apple Watch, maybe you're connecting to a new Wi-Fi network at a hotel or some other place, it can then share the network to your Apple Watch. This is how it's always worked. But the one thing that's been changed basically is if you connect to a new Wi-Fi network on your iPhone, but your Apple Watch is not nearby, it will not share the network automatically even when they come back together. So again, it seems a little odd that this is a new rule, but it is something they have to do to comply. There may be some other variances there, but basically Basically, it just won't sync automatically if your watch is not nearby. When it comes to bugs and bug fixes, well, they've only mentioned one thing that they've actually fixed this time around, and basically it has to do with Apple Music. So if you're using the Music app, so if we go over to Music here, if you're using music and sometimes you go to the next track on your Apple watch, it could fail previously. Now it will no longer fail and it will work properly. Hopefully this resolves some issues with it syncing with your iPhone as well, as many people were having some odd issues with that. But in general, it seems like the syncing issues and going between tracks should be resolved this time around. As far as anything else, well, let's take a look at Apple's release notes that they release on their website. So if we go into Safari and go to Apple's public facing website here with all of their notes and all of the recent releases here, if we go down to watchOS 26.2 RC, 
you'll see that we have the overview with resolved issues such as instruments where it says fix the allocation instrument sometimes fails to report reference counting operations for native Swift types. There's also some new features for developers for store kit and they've resolved some issues as well, where it says an issue prevents the purchase of a subscription using a win back offer from testing with store kit testing in Xcode. So those have basically been resolved. They don't really mention anything else. Of course, we do expect some updates to security as well. And on Apple's security release website, if we scroll down, you'll see all of the latest releases, but we won't have this updated until Apple releases it to the public. So that's typically what they do every year. We'll get more information once it actually releases as far as what they've fixed or patched when it comes to security. When it comes to the release of watchOS 26.2 and all of the other updates, such as iOS 26.2, we can expect the update as soon as December 8th. Now, we don't know if Apple will release it that soon since they released this update later in the week. Last year, we actually had an RC2 with a little bit later release. However, we do expect it to release before the 19th to comply with some rules in Japan that allow for things such as third-party app stores and the ability to change your power sleep wake button from activating Siri to allow you to change it to activate maybe something else such as Gemini or ChatGPT. So we could see it on the 8th or the 15th. We don't have a specific date. After that, we do expect watchOS 26.3 beta 1 to go along with iOS 26.3 beta 1, and most likely that will be the last update for the rest of the year as far as beta updates go. Typically, Apple will resume sometime around the second or third week of January, so that's typically what we get every year, and that's what you can expect as far as the releases go. Now, if you're wondering if you should install watchOS 26.2 RC, well, so far it seems to be fairly stable and the overall experience has been pretty good so far. Many people have reported it's decent. However, it is not available to the public, even though most likely it will be a public release. So if you're cautious about this, you may want to hold off. However, if you're on previous betas, definitely install it. However, these updates seem to be pretty great, but there's no way to downgrade unless you bring it to Apple. So if you're cautious about that, if something's critical, I would just hold off until the public release. Otherwise, it seems to be generally stable. When it comes to overall performance, well, it hasn't been out too long, but going into things such as music, like I showed you already, or maybe we go into, let's see if we can find it here under noise. If we go into noise, that usually takes a second to load. You'll see it loads in just a second, and now it's picking up the decibel level. So in general, it's pretty good overall, seems to be fairly fast. Going into the control center is still a little bit laggy for some reason. I'm not sure why. I don't know if this is part of liquid glass or something else, but either way, it seems like it's picking up. When it comes to battery life, well, so far it's been pretty good. I was using watchOS 26.1 for a while, really had no issues with it battery life-wise after a few days, but let's take a look at the battery here and we'll scroll down and under battery and under battery health, we'll take a look here. I use this every single day and we're at 100% capacity. So I would expect this to stay at 100% for quite some time as my previous watches did, but I'm using this a lot more this time around for things such as going for daily walks, tracking my heart rate and much more. So I've actually reduced that quite a bit and I got some high blood pressure alerts. And speaking of that, there were other releases today in different countries. For example, hypertension notifications from the Apple Watch are now available on supported Apple Watches in the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, and Vietnam. Apple's also updated the Apple Watch with sleep apnea notifications that are now available in Colombia, and the hearing test and hearing aid updates to health have also been added to Bahrain, Costa Rica, and Paraguay. Also, automatic conversation boost now expands to more countries in Europe with the UK, Austria, Germany, Poland, Switzerland, Finland, Norway, Ireland, and Denmark. So all of those are available now, even on watchOS 26.1. So if you're in those countries, you should be able to use it. And I've also heard from some of you that it seems to be available in India as well, as far as the overall hypertension notifications. So it looks like Apple's rolling that out in more places and it notified me and it's really helped me get a little bit more in shape and I continue to work on it. Many people ask what watch face I use. So if we press and hold here, this is the modular watch face. And if we go to our complications here, you'll see the center one is one you probably aren't familiar with. This is Lumi. It's a paid app that I paid for a long time ago. I like the look of it, but it tells me when golden hour is one of the best times to take photo or video. You can also change it to show different moon cycles as well as sun up, sun down, things like that. So those are what we have as far as the overall complications. And then everything else is fairly standard here. So the overall weather, date, activity, 
Then we have compass as well as messages. So that's everything so far in watchOS 26.2 RC. I do expect some enterprise updates as well. And if there are any other updates, we'll talk about it in the final release, but let me know if you found anything in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.